Hey, everybody, this is the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, Pastor Schomburg. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Good. I missed you, buddy. Um, we get to uh, we got to hang out this summer in conferences, and that was fun because we only heard the right stuff. It's radically different from our podcast here, where we only talk about the wrong questions. Right. Um, you kicked me a good one. Um, I would like to kind of tackle it because it's one I've answered in Bible study a lot too. Um, but you said like, listen, pastor, um, if my sins are forgiven in baptism, my sins are forgiven anytime I pray for it. Like, why do I need the Lord's Supper so much? Why does God give me all of this stuff if I just can say, forgive me? Right. No, um, that's good. Because a lot of times we'll treat them as like, well, it's the same. I don't have to. Uh, in, in fact, I was telling you that uh, I just had this question in a catechism class of uh, if I'm baptized, well, then why do I need to always go to the Lord's Supper? Uh, and why do I need it often, as Jesus tells us to, to do it, right? Um, and and really, it's I, I found it helpful as we've been going through on our Thursday nights here, the large catechism, and mm-hmm. we finished the first half. We're on baptism now. But uh, there are three enemies, if you will, that are constantly repeated. And uh, First John, uh, in John's epistle, he repeats these too often. And it's the enemies that we have of first our sinful flesh, right? Uh, or sometimes it's called the old Adam. Okay. Or sometimes it's just the part of you that is sinner, if you will. Um, and then the second one is the world. And uh, by the world, we're sort of talking about like the passions of the world, the schemes of the world, the mm-hmm. uh, the stuff in the world, which is in opposition to God and his word. Right. Uh, and finally is the devil, who Luther reminds us, because Peter reminds us in First Peter, that uh, the devil doesn't sleep. He doesn't stop and take a nap or say, well, I, I'm going to take a break now from bugging you. I'm not sending any demons your way to accuse you and and torment you. But instead, you know, we're just going to rest. No, he doesn't rest. And so because of those three uh, enemies, if you will, or constants in our lives, we are constantly needing all the gifts that the Lord gives us. Uh, And that's why he gives them, right? He gives them uh, in, in different and unique ways. And they all, you know, have a very uniqueness about them. And the simple answer for why, uh, why the Lord's supper would be because Jesus gives it to us. That's like a really simple answer. Like right? if God is smarter than you and he says it's good for you to have, maybe he's onto something. Sure. And and I do love in the in the catechism where he keeps going back to the words of Jesus, uh, which tell us why we need the sacrament. Mm-hmm. And it's the words for you, for the forgiveness of sins. That's right. why, that's what it gives. Uh, and why you need it. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, I, I love Luther's uh, Christian questions and their answers. Okay. Uh, which is, which, you know, we're encouraged to read before we go to the sacrament and to go through. Uh, it's a good daily reading, even if you were going to pick something to read for a while. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a good one uh, because it considers our lives in view of the Ten Commandments, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it looks at the Ten Commandments. Um and then at the end of it, he says, if you still don't think you need the sacrament, then just check to see if you're in human flesh. And then he says, check to see if you're in the world and know that there's the devil too. So mm-hmm. you have those three enemies that are constantly going. Uh, and so I, I can always say that uh, I need to confess my sins. I, and, and that's part of... Luther realized that early, which is why even in the as early as 1517, he begins his theses, the 95 theses, with uh, the Christian life being a life of repentance. repentance. You talk about this, and it's it's a really sort of good way to, to to phrase it because you you started out by saying like first you have ongoing enemies, and they're different. Like it's it's easy to sort of reduce Christianity in practice, if you're a Lutheran at least, to the forgiveness right. of sins, because everything we talk about is always Jesus forgives you. Um, and we start to talk about it as like sin points and Jesus points. And as long as we're sort of in a net positive Jesus point situation, we're probably fine. Um, but right. it, it's it's problematic because when we talk about sin, first, we're not just talking about 
things you've done wrong or right. didn't do for that. But we're talking about a condition that, that's going to constantly need to be addressed. But also, in addition to that, there is a devil who will assault your conscience because that's that's really what he does. Um, the, the devil's job is to work doubt and attack your conscience. Um, this is his his great goal. And then finally, you have the world, which will endure, uh, which will force you to endure all sorts of, of temptations and trials. And so when our Lord gives us these gifts, first he knows what he's doing when he says, it's good for you to have these things. And it's good for you to, to sort of have a life that is engaged with them. But then you can actually start to see that even though all of them do forgive their sins, they do more. And they are actually designed in many, many ways to sort of confront uh, some of those things that are, are going on that are not just sort of sin points versus Jesus points. And so when it comes to, for example, your baptism, uh, baptism is a, it, it forgives your sins. It daily washes you clean. But it's also a question of, of shame and honor when it comes to your baptism. It's a question of identity. And so it's it's an important thing here because like when it, when you come across a victim, uh, one of the very first things we always tell somebody who's been who's been molested or something terrible, we, we sort of say it's, it's not your fault. And it's it's true, but it doesn't actually make them feel better because it's not their fault, but it's still their burden. It's still their shame. Yeah. And your baptism is a medicine here. Um, it's an identity. It's a washing clean. When it, when you actually have to engage in a world that's around you all the time uh, with the strength to actually carry on and fight a fight where you half of you, at least, is old Adam and doesn't want to fight and actually just wants to go do more sin. And and the world is just scratching at you. And the, de- the Lord's Supper might actually be a strength for the day, um, that the Psalter that, that he gets, the word, the sermon, the absolution, all of these things are, are to combat those enemies that you set up for us that are not just sort of giving you negative points, but are just always at your heels. So, so what do you cling to in the face of each one? I like this a lot. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned baptism uh, and the baptism, like the, the fourth part in the catechism is uh, that it, what it indicates, right? Mm. The death of old Adam and the, and the raising of the new man. But uh, in the large catechism, he says, not only does it indicate that, it actually does that. Right. And that's part of Peter's, you know, uh, urging of today, <laughs> now, that baptism now saves you. Baptism now is putting to death the old man and and bringing to life the new man, uh, it, it, which is the life of faith, which receives that gift uh, and and is strengthened. Uh, the other thing is that we're co- because we're in sinful flesh, we're constantly in need uh, because to be a sinner is to to be in unbelief. Right? It's to say mm-hmm. not only I, I'm not going to receive, I'm going to take for myself. Sure. Right. Uh, and so uh, here Jesus gives us this beautiful word uh, of, uh, you know, when he says, take, eat, this is my body, this is my blood. That word for take is also the same word uh, in, in Greek, at least, that is the same word where he says, receive the Holy Spirit in John 20. Hmm. Hmm. And so here he's literally saying, receive this. This is my body. So it's not even ultimately about my taking, but my taking is just my receiving of what he's giving there in his body and his blood, which is for my forgiveness. And and we know that from the catechism that where there's forgiveness of sins, there's also life and salvation. All the other stuff flows from this forgiveness that's given because without it, I stand guilty before God. I stand in shame and in dishonor, uh, not only for my sin, but like you pointed out, the sin that's done to me, the things that, you know, uh, because I'm in this world and I'm around sinners and I'm in a family of sinners and I have friends that are sinners and, you know, people I work with that are sinners, uh, there is uh, so much uh, evil and, and sin that's brought to me. And my sins are a fruit or a work of or come from original sin, inherited sin, which is the real problem that I can't fix, but Jesus did. I love this. You, you mentioned as we kind of started down this road that with sin comes unbelief. And, and that doesn't mean that every person who is a sinner is an unbeliever, but but rather that if you are a Christian, it means you have two wills right now that are fighting for what you will fear, love, and trust in the most. So if you are a sinner, that means whenever you sin against the fourth commandment and, and struggle to listen to your parents, it's because there's a, there's a little bit of a first commandment issue right there that refuses to see the parents that God gave you as good gifts. Um, there's there's always this, this contention within the Christian. And so God doesn't sort of wait for the Christian to make good choices. But like you said, gives that we would receive. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and also in this too, we look at each, you know, each one of these gifts. One of, one of the things we don't do is count the sacraments. Because again, then we're kind of thinking in a measurable way of the law versus the way of gifts, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we know is because Jesus gave these things we call sacraments, right? He gives mm -hmm. confession and absolution, uh, and, and he gives that so that a particular sin or group of sins or whatever the things that, that the devil's using to bring accusation to my conscience— uh, can can be dealt with mm -hmm. by Jesus himself through the words and the mouth of a, of a pastor. So we have that, which, which is very specific uh, and, and is its own gift, right? Sure. Uh, just as the only thing we know where, where we know we receive the body and blood of Christ is in this supper that the Lord gives us. And the only place we know where the name of God's put on us is in baptism. So, yeah, they, they they're they're all doing the same thing in in one regard, but in another mm -hmm. regard, Jesus gives us these great things that are doing what He would have them do in us. And so, uh, it, it's better rather than asking, "Why do I need to go to uh, baptism?" or "If I'm baptized, why do I need to go to the Lord's Supper?" "Why do I need to go to confession?" Which, by the way, Luther says. Going to confession is just being a Christian. It's yeah. just, <laughs> that's There's this thing that sinners always do, though, is we'll take two things that are given to us, and if we don't like one, we'll try and set it against the other one. It's like when I tried to get my parents to fight so I didn't have to clean my room when I was a kid. And in the same way, we're like, ah, going to church every week, like I got stuff to do. So sure. like, let's take the gift of baptism and the gift of the Lord's Supper. And instead of say like, maybe the God who gave them is not schizophrenic and warring against himself. And maybe the gifts that he gives us aren't warring against each other. Maybe actually they're both meant to, to actually work together for good. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and we are, we are masters of pulling apart what God's given. Right, and trying to sort of unravel them and analyze them separately, so we and, can control them. Yeah, and and so it's not like, uh, yeah, exactly, because it's not it, Christianity isn't like learning math, but the life mm -hmm. of faith is a is a life of receiving. It's coming to mm -hmm. Jesus as a as a as a baby, and in full need, just like blind Bartimaeus who says, "Kyrie, ha Lord, have mercy on me," and uh, without you, I don't have anything. Right. So let's kind of rephrase the question then, because the wrong question is, if I'm baptized, why do I need to go to the Lord's Supper? What's maybe the right question? Um, why would the Lord have me go to his supper? Yeah, that's perfect. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. why, why would he do that? And, and right. it's so great because, again, we, we have Jesus' very words that are the words of institution giving us this, this great uh, blessed meal are the words that tell us why. So we don't right. ever have to say, I wonder why I should go to the Lord's Supper. But he says, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sin. That's brilliant. And it matters the question that you're asking, because if you're asking a law question, you're really only going to get a law answer. There's no real comfort there. But if you ask a question that actually demands the gospel, the gospel is a comfort. And, and so it, it's good that we ask the right questions. Pastor Schomburger, thank you so much for hanging out this week. Uh, let's do it again Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to, Thanks, good to be care, with brother. you. All right. You too. I'll talk to you later.